Hello everyone, so today we have a ramp build. Yesterday we featured a very high level, very focused on counterplay style build, and those are really effective. But a lot of times they're pretty difficult to run, they're kind of mentally taxing, so it's hard to play those for an extended period of time, even if you're doing relatively well. Today's build is completely the opposite. It is a deck that just says, I don't want to counter what you're doing, I'm going to slam my stuff on the board and put out more points, more value than what you can. And that is going to be a ramp build, but it's a new age ramp build. So now that we have Blink, I feel like that is a very strong card in the Electro style ramp shell that we had before. And then we also have Namora, which I hadn't played in ramp until today. And she has been absolutely amazing. It's easy to kind of write off Namora as a really tough to use card. She's very technically difficult you have to play into certain lanes there are locations that will just make her ability ineffective but when it works it is incredible this one doesn't go all in like some of the other namora decks where you need her ability to really be putting up and competing with those high level power plays this one just does those anyways and she's kind of that secondary just boost onto what you're already wanting to do and so the perfect line would be something like Nebula or Jeff on one and two, Electro on three, Blink to flip Electro into a Namora, gives you so much early game tempo. And then you can lock down the game with like a Sandman on five or a Sandman on four into an Odin on five. And you just have so much impact. And it's so frustrating how many flexible play lines this deck can bring to the table it's hard to talk through all of them because there's so many ways that you can just position good raw value um so you could do the wave on three if you don't have electro and then you could either do blink you could do sandman if it's a deck that the opponent wants to ramp out a lot of things you can do that you could do wave into dr doom on four on five you can go the sandman route you can go the namora route into an Odin on six to re-trigger the Doctor Doom. You have Magneto to kind of rip away those three and four cost cards to make it really difficult for the opponent to lean on, I don't know, Brood or Sentry or the Void. You can really rip those into locations that they're not anticipating. We also have one of my favorite cards in Eliath. Eliath is one of those cards that when I took my break, Eliath was everywhere. Eliath was a monster. But nowadays, it doesn't seem like it's played all that much. It's a lot more difficult. You have to make sure that you have a good value on the board before it comes down. Because one, you need tempo to get value out of Eliath. And then you need to anticipate what the opponent's wanting to do. But when it works, it can be so crippling and so hard to anticipate from the opponent that he definitely earns his spot in this build. We're going to go ahead and jump over into a couple of games. I'm not going to go too long-winded because it is difficult to talk through all of the different like intricate play lines or things that you can do, but this deck is very, very good. I ended up going nine and four for a 69.2% win rate, an average cube gain of 1.08 per game. And so this deck can absolutely pump out numbers. It can absolutely hold its own. If you're worried about Shadow King or Shang-Chi, you're spreading so much power across the board that for them to do that kind of relatively low tempo drop on those turns, you're in a really good position to already have power in those other lanes that it's all that it's likely not enough to overcome what you have on the board so we are going to go ahead and jump over into a couple of games thank you guys as always for being here i hope you guys enjoy plus we do get the retreat just so much power that we're throwing onto the board and so gladiator those normal like mill style cards that kind of became pretty consistent and pretty uh, common are really really tough just about everything that they pull is going to be value added for you in this build. So we're going to take the two. Let's jump over into the next one. All right. First up, we have Kako. Um, the first location is Icebox. Unfortunately, it hits our Nebula, so we're not able to curve that out early. Uh, Castle Zemo comes down. <laughs> Electro into Castle Zemo is always one of my most favorite plays, and it warrants a snap every single time. So if we drill into it, um, even if it's on turn four or five, we may still it may still warrant a play. They're going to get a copy of one of these three. We get a copy of their Thanos. And so they skipped on the first two turns with Thanos. Um, and just the beautiful split, too. The beautiful split border, just fantastic. But this is where we unfortunately snap. We have it on curve, too. Castle Zemo's diabolical. They haven't played anything. Thanos wants to play a lot of things onto the board. And so, unfortunately, they're going to know very, very quickly 
that they're probably not going to have much of a chance here, uh, which is unfortunate. I always feel a little bit bad, but this is the down, this pure best play we could do here. Um, and so they have the sweat emoji. It's going to be really rough. Um, we now have, like, we could do Sandman. We draw into Blink, but <laughs> it's not something we want to play. We probably end up, we would have probably ended up doing like Sandman and then next turn would be like a Doctor Doom, maybe a Magneto, but them only being able to play one card per turn really hamstrings what that deck wants to do. All right, next up we have rank 43, Mr. Darkseid. Uh, the first location is the Hellfire Club. With the Nexus, it's going to be really interesting to see um, how that play turns out. I'm going to play Jeff over to the left. We can always move it over into the Nexus if we want to. Unfortunately, we don't have a way to hard counter the cards that they play into the Nexus, but maybe we can potentially pull them out um, with something like Magneto. I'm going to go ahead and play Electro into mid. We have a Blink that's going to be able to rotate that away, give us a better value card in return. The Elsa Bloodstone is really scary because I anticipate the like, Kitty Pride and those sorts of cards. Um, I think we're going to really leverage the Sandman on turn number five. So let's go ahead and do Blink. That's going to take away the Electro, depending on what it hits. Um, we could get a couple of good hits off of it. If we end up hitting... Hold on. I was going to take it back. In case we ended up flipping into Namora, I was going to move Jeff over, play Blink to the left, but it's fine. Um, it, we do end up hitting Namora, which is a little unfortunate. But... We do have a Jeff now that can move over into mid. We could always do an Odin to re-trigger, get more value, move it over into the Nexus. But I really like the idea of doing the Sandman because it's going to re really restrict them on that last turn. They're going to have to choose on what is going to be best for them to find a way to win the last turn. Um, and a lot of times it's not going to be great. And so if it's a Quake, we do have the ability to do, to do like a Doctor Doom. That way we're impacting all of the lanes. We might not even move Jeff over. It really depends on how it looks like we're competing. We could top deck into a Magneto to pull the Elsa Bloodstone out. That would give us some value. Let's see, we'll see what it looks like. They did snap into it. Uh, Sandman coming down can disrupt a lot of really big play lines. So Kitty Pride into Nocturne. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Um, and so they could rip the Nexus location away. We can do Magneto to force them into ripping it away, uh, but then I think that makes this one tough. So I think we have to go with something like Doctor Doom. We have to go with that power spread, um, and they can only do one card. So I think the chances of, of us being able to outpower whatever they do here are very, very big. I'm not going to snap back, but I do think we have a good shot, and I think we're favored here. And we do get the retreat with the restriction of how much they wanted to play several cards on the last turn sandman was probably absolutely devastating for how they wanted to play it we will take the two let's go ahead and jump over into the next one <laughs> all right next up we have sir knight uh the first location is kiln fantastic for an electro into blink we could also do wave into playing a card over there we also have nocturne so we could do jeff into electro into namora as a way to have that flexible Jeff play uh, and get some decent power in Kiln as a, as a result. Oh, or they just scrap that. And um, we're going to be Diabolica. We're going to snap into it. Uh, always feels bad, but Electro on their side, especially for decks that aren't expecting an Electro, is so devastating. We're going to play Electro into Oscorp Tower. Next turn, we can do a five cost. So Namora, maybe. Um, that way it bumps up our Jeff, and then we can move it over to the left. Let's see. Uh, debris. Interesting. Uh, but they are still going to be stuck with the Electro. So something like Cersei. Mockingbird. Even if their discounts are in place, become very hard to consistently want to use. Um, so I could move Jeff. I could move Jeff and then do something like uh, Namora to hit here and here or can move Jeff and do a name more into mid that we're going to hit here and here and hope to eventually get a Magneto or an Odin or Dr. Doom or Magneto or several outs that we can potentially have. So they have the Sentry play. So a lot of value there into an Annihilus could still absolutely be crippling on our end. 
but we'll, we'll of course see what that looks like. So Namora can be switched into Doctor Doom or Odin. But I like the idea of doing Magneto here. We're going to pull uh, most of their cards over into Grand Central. Um, potentially the Void, potentially making it where they can't do... Ooh. If they do a Nihilus, they could potentially cap us out in this lane. That's okay. We're going to have faith that they're not going to do a Nihilus this turn. And so everything is going to go over into mid if they don't have a Nihilus now. Um, Cersei. Ooh. So the Cersei, we dodge the bullet on the void. The Silk bounces over into the left lane. Uh, Namora, it's a Lyoth, which is fine. We have this lane handily locked in. And then this lane, I think we have handily locked in as well. Let's go ahead and play the Doctor Doom for good measure. And uh, unfortunately, we are able to just kind of position ourselves in a way that we have more Victory. flexible plays, more power that we're putting out. We are able to grab the win. We'll take the two cubes. Let's go ahead and jump over into the next one. Next up, we have Tony Wan. Um, and they, they whine on the internet, according to their title. And so the first location is Central Park. Not going to be a great Namora game. That's fine. This deck doesn't hinge so much on the Namora, which I, is why I like her in this kind of ramp style build. Sometimes you're just going to get decent value out of it, but it's never feels like it's a requirement to have it and to play it. Um, we now have their cable. Probably going to skip this game. So if you see it, it's a miracle. Something cool happened. Uh, but Weird World games, a lot of times, are just kind of uneventful. You're you, you're winning with their deck instead of... Uh, so technically, your deck loses. So we have the Iron Heart, which I think is kind of okay, into maybe a skip and a blink to grab one of our cards. Be interesting. We do have Doctor Doom, and so I think that's okay. The morph turns into Shang-Chi, so we're okay with that. It could have been uh, much worse in like a Doctor Doom, a Lyoth, just getting more value there, but we'll absolutely take it for what it was. Uh, I think we skip here. We could do t White Tiger on turn number five. They grabbed our Red Hulk. So we know that that's not in our deck anymore. Into a Jubilee could also be kind of a Hail Mary pull. I kind of like Blink here, though. We overshadow the Shang-Chi power. We switch this one out for something better than zero power. And we have the Doctor Doom to finish across the board on the last turn. So I kind of like this. The Sandman, perfectly fine. Um, this cards that we had in hand, perfectly support Sandman. Magneto future. is massive. They are now uh, capped out here. We're winning these two, but we can easily just drop a uh, Doctor Doom. I'm not going to snap back because I do want them to stay here. But an unfortunate kind of a turn of events. The Sandman definitely wasn't the, the line to go with. We don't have Leader built into our deck, so I'm assuming they don't either. We do get the stay, interestingly enough. Ultron coming in to the left. To the right? Could that have won? No. No, nah, it never could have won. We will grab the four cubes. Go ahead and jump over into the next one. All right. Next up, we have Zero. And we have Electro Blink in our opening hand, so great if we can draw into like Namora and Sandman, even better. Uh, unfortunately, they had Nebula in their opening hand. We did not. Uh, with Lemoria, nothing is going to reveal this turn. Oh my goodness, these are some... We never see the Jeff or Nebula, and it's really unfortunate. Um, I think they play into the Abbey this turn to get the free card draw. We don't have Namora, so if we play Blink next turn, we're going to play it into a different location in case that flip happens. Uh, we have drawn into almost all of our six cost cards, so it's looking like the Electro Flip is going to be one of these two, which I think is uh, probably okay. Yeah, wow. Um, all of our six cost cards. This is the exact same situation we ran into uh, the last game we played, where we <laughs> it flipped into Namora, uh, and it's just that there's not a whole, whole lot that you can do. So with Kazar here, so it does <laughs> flips into Namora. Uh, I lost the last one. It was a, a ramp deck, though. And so I think that's the only kind of slight bit of solace that we had. And the last time we went with like a Doctor Doom into an Odin line. We have the potential to do a Lyoth. We have the potential to do like a Magneto. Um, but when we hit this lane with Odin, that's going to give us an extra plus five on our Doombot in mid, which can be a little bit surprising. 
to the opponent. Um, it's not an ideal line, but it's still a decent amount of power um, for something that shouldn't happen as often as it does. And so Mojo in the right lane is uh, interesting. It must have come from, no, it's built into their deck. Very interesting. And they have Squirrel Girl. If they do like a Gilgamesh, we're going to win this lane. We can help swing this lane. I think we have this one easily locked in. I'm not going to snap because I do want to see it play out. I want to feel justified being able to win the same line that I lost with last time because the other the opponent had a little bit higher of a roll. They had a little bit better. It was close, but we lost that one. We only lost two, so we're going to make up for it here. And Namora a lot of times can feel like, why is it an add? Why is it an include? Um, but in this game, she's going to be an extra 10 power, so 16 power presence on the board just for being here. And so it's really hard to kind of write that off, write that amount of power off anyways. So they do stick it out. They move Nocturne to the left. They play an extra card in the right lane. Shadow King comes in and brings our Blink back down to uh, base, but it is the highest power card there. So it is still 10. Um, with the Mockingbird in the right, we're going to be able to tie that location. The extra plus five on the Doombot would help us break any kind of tiebreakers that would be in effect, but we did handily win left. We won mid. We will take the two cubes. Feels good for that line to work when last time that exact same play, exact same locations uh, just barely lost us, but we still put out almost 60 power on the board, about 55 power. Let's go ahead and jump over into the next one. Next up, we have Rock Leo uh, or Lead. Rock Lead? I'm not sure if it's Leo or Lead. The O's and D's in this game are driving me crazy. Um, this time we do have Jeff, we have Electro, so a blink flip into Namora wouldn't be as big of a deal. Um, I like the, ooh, and we do have Namora, so honestly, it could be just that we do, um, Jeff, Electro, it might be worthwhile to just do Namora. We would know that the extra power of Electro is safe in Kiln, and we have that flexibility of Jeff to push that power wherever we need to. And so I'm not sure if that's exactly what we go with or not, but it is a possible line, because then we could always do that. Um, maybe we hit it with an Odin, maybe a, a Doctor Doom after. We have a lot of paths to a successful end destination here. So we're going to go ahead and go Electro into Kiln. Mount Vesuvius will be in effect after turn five. So if we're going to snap, it's going to be after that point. Um, I think we want to do the blink. We're going to take it out. We could potentially hit Magneto, Red Hulk. Um, Sandman would kind of be a lower roll. Odin would be a lower roll, but still very decent. The Negasonic is not going to work in mid because we're not playing a card there on the last turn. We do hit Magneto. So if that is the real Mysterio in mid, they get a little bit more value than what we have right now until we play something like, I don't know, Namora. And I'll go ahead and play Nebula into the right lane just for good measure. We have either Eliath or Doctor Doom to help us spread even more power across the board. And the Negasonic for them is just not going to be very handy this game. And so Namora, when she comes down, when she works, she's very finicky. She's very, um, she can be derailed very easily. But when she works, she works very well. And so they have the void, they have the hood. I have to assume that either Annihilus or Cersei is in the works here. I kind of want to do something like this. We give up mid. If they go Annihilus, they're just destroying this lane entirely. And so they won't be able to compete. Um, if they're going with Cersei, we have initiative, so Eliath is going to take that away. There's no way that they can compete there. Uh, they do have a demon, so they might stay on a snap. We're going to find out. Uh, but the Eliath is primed, poised, and ready. It is so easy to forget about Eliath because he's so unpopular now. Um, and it's so much harder to use him rather than uh, before where you could just easily slap him into a lane and know that you're going to win that one. You have to have initiative. You have to know that you have a good um, lead to get value from it. They may stay here. They do end up staying. The left lane, we'll see what it ends up being. It is the Cersei. That ability is not going to be effective. So no matter what kind of high roll they could have gotten, it is not going to be enough. We win mid, we win right, and then the demon, they can have the left lane. We will grab the four cubes, um, and that's what this deck is going to do. It's easy to kind of shrug off Namora because it's not an all-in strategy in this build, but in this game, she provided 10 extra power outside of her base six, which is huge. You didn't even have to hit it with an Odin, and it just provides so much more flexibility in this kind of ramp style build. We will take it. Let's go ahead and jump over into the next one. 
All right, next up we have Mars, and hopefully we can put, a, put enough power onto the board that we're gonna blast them off into Mars. Uh, so the Snow Guard comes down, we have to be thinking Loki deck. And I think that's uh, maybe maybe that's Loki Doki with us. Let's go ahead and play Jeff into mid, and then Electro probably over into the right lane, depending on what that location turns out to be. And uh, we'll go from there. The Nebula does get a little bit of scaling, and Kun Lun, so moving him over eventually would give us a bonus. I'm going to go ahead and play Electro. We don't have uh, a perfect next turn play. Drawing into Blink would be perfect. Namora would be perfect. Otherwise, it looks like we're going to go like a Sandman into hopefully like an Odin into just like a Red Hulk or a uh, Doctor Doom. But that, uh, that is tentative. With the Snow Guard, they have, wow, interesting. They have Shanna. What kind of deck are you cooking, my friend? Um, Mars with the really interesting build here. I think I'm going to go Namora into Sandman, potentially. Um, into uh, an Eliath, into something big for the final turn. We'll see, though. A lot of times, these Flood-style decks don't run cards that are meant to hard counter you. A lot of times, they just want to do big things on the last turn. So if we can have the pressure of having the advantage going to this last turn, their Gilgamesh would be much less effective. Doctor Doom could be something that we could go with here to try to grab a priority so that we can position an uh, so that we could position an Eliath in a way to win. That may be the better line. I do like Sandman, but they are pretty restrictive on space, and so I think it's easier to place like an Eliath if we can versus their last turn play where they typically want to do Gilgamesh plus a one cost card anyways. And so they do do a double drop, uh, Snow Guard Bear, which is fine, and then Dazzler, which is also fine. I kind of think Namora is our is our play here. I think it's our out. Not, not Namora, Namora. Uh, I think Odin is our play here. This is going to bring us up to... 22. If they drop a blue marvel, this is still 22. And so we may not move the Jeff. I don't think we need to move the Jeff. But I'm going to go with just this. We're going to leave Jeff as it is in case they do like a blue marvel and a squirrel girl maybe. And they do end up staying. They do a double drop, one to the left, one to the right. Let's see if what we have is able to maintain versus what they ended up dropping. Mockingbird and then the blue marvel play. And so they do reach 22 in mid. They went left by six. I'm glad we left our Jeff as is. <laughs> Anticipating that possibility of a blue Marvel play. I think in a lot of situations that could have been a loss on our end. But we were able to keep this as a tiebreaker, knowing that the, mo that the most they could push here was plus four. And then the rest was just the value that we were putting on the board. We will gladly take the two. And that is actually where we're going to end the video today. Thank you guys as always for being here. Anybody that's new to the channel, you being here means the the world to me. Thank you guys as always for watching this has been TLSG. Later guys.